This is Deuteronomy 4 and verse 7. For what nation is there so great who had the Most High so nigh unto them as Yahweh our power is in all things that we call upon him for? Kal halal Yahweh, Bahashem, Hawashai, Bahashem, Kwakudash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, where I learned this truth from. Peace and salutations to the brothers on down. Teaching, preaching, pushing this gospel. Good news to four corners of the earth. Waking up the hopeful elect of Israel. Greetings also to the few sisters that tune in to these video epistles. We've called this lesson a wicked root. That's right, I woke up with this thought on my mind. I had a few different lessons I was working on but this as usual something pushes its way to the front of the queue and you dare not fight against it wicked root it's wickedness sometimes can f you feel like you're overwhelmed you see a few headlines you see some memes or and you can't make head or tail of what you're looking at. Your mind gets in a frazzle. Your spirit is vexed. Watch this. You're asking yourself. Revert back to the scriptures to get a gist of the madness that is happening around you. It's no wonder the various prophets and men of the Lord have always been asking how much longer must this wickedness be allowed to reign in the earth? So I picked a few scriptures here, not totally focused on the wickedness, but on the path around and the path through the wickedness that has been set up by the Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh, his only begotten son. His name is Yahweh Shai. We know the names. Those who don't want to call the names that's up to them, that's on them. We believe this by faith, and faith is a gift from the Heavenly Father. It's not given to every man. So let's go back to Deuteronomy 4, and let's start now at 5. Deuteronomy 4, verse 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments. This is the Most High speaking through his servant Moses. Moses passing on these laws, statutes, and commandments to the children of Israel, not the whole world. Well, we could start at four, but ye that did cleave unto Yahweh power are alive, every one of you, this day. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as Yahweh my power commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear all these statutes and say surely this great nation is a wise <clears throat> and understanding people for what nation is there so great who hath the heavenly father so nigh unto them as the lord our god yahweh our power is in all things that we call upon him for and what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day. Verse 9, only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. This is a specific commandment to the children of Israel. This is the covenant, the promises. But nothing to do with anybody else. This is our way through this wicked route. His people. Currently being called by the bywords of Negro, Latinos and Native Americans. Was the, the diaspora, the dispersed amongst the world. So let's go to our next scripture, Deuteronomy 32, let's start at 
28, for they are a nation void of counsel. Neither is there any understanding in them. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock, with our power, had sold them and the Lord had shut them up, for their rock is not as our rock. Even our enemies themselves being judges, and listen to this, for their vine is the vine of Sodom. We all know what this practice of Sodom, sodomy is. Who's pushing this vibration throughout the whole earth? Is that Edomite, the so-called white man, the devil that the Bible speaks of? That's his favorite, sodomy. And of the fields of Gomorrah, their grapes are the grapes of gall, that's poison. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps, that's snakes. So we see this serpent, wicked, Sodom. All these are words synonymous with this so-called white man, the Edomite in the scriptures. His vine, or their vine, is the vine of Sodom. He's a Sodomite, that's what he is. That's the vibe he pushes throughout the world. Let's go to Romans 9 for our next scripture. Romans 9, starting at 17. This chapter here is one of these power-packed script chapters that just nails it. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, and who's a Pharaoh in this time? It's the current rulership of the earth is the Edomite, the white man, the devil. That's who he is in the scriptures. Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up that I might show my power in thee and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy and whom he will he hardeneth. You see, Pharaoh of ancient times was told to let the people go but he couldn't do it. The master had a plan. Thou wilt say unto then, unto me, why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? No one. Nay, but, O man, who art thou that replies against the heavenly Father? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? That's what Esau Edom is saying. He's made as the wicked root. That serpent. He's made to perform the wickedness in the earth. He's the sword that the Most High is using, the hammer of the earth to perform wickedness on the left-hand side. See, the Heavenly Father controls both sides. He created... What? Let's go to it. Let's go to it. Wasn't going to bother with this. Let's just read that. Isaiah 45 and 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. You see? That's right. So where were we? Why hast thou made me thus? This is Esau daring to question the Heavenly Father. Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? What if the Heavenly Father, willing to show his wrath, and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. That's the Edomites. That's what they are. And they're about to receive judgment, that wicked root. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. Who's the vessels of mercy? That's the sons of Adam, the Hebrew Israelites. That's who we are. His people which he had afore prepared unto glory. See? Where next? Looks like we're featuring Deuteronomy. Today I think we're, we're going back to Deuteronomy. Let's see. I think I've lost my place here. Deuteronomy 32. I just read that. Yes, back to Deuteronomy 32.
add four. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment, a power of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and a crooked generation. Do ye thus requite the Lord Yahweh, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy father that bought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee thy elders, and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, what did he do? He set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Why? Verse 9, For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is a lot of his inheritance. See? He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about and instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. That's who we are. We belong to him. We are his people. We're in Ecclesiastes. I think we had a few verses here. 7 equals that's the 7 let's go 13 and 14 consider the work of the most high for who can make that straight which he hath made crooked see this wicked root he can't do anything about his plight he's fighting trying to input the next phase of his mad scheme his under the skin technology to try to extend his rulership but his bounds are fixed and he can't go one inch beyond what's been set up by Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, verse 14, in the day of prosperity be joyful, but in the day of adversity consider, the Most High also had set the one over against the other, to the end that man should find nothing after him, sees it. Balance, this we read before, he formed a light and darkness, you see, his perfect will you can't fight against it. It doesn't matter how big and bad you think you are. What's that scripture that speaks about a balance and unjust weight is abomination unto the most high. Let's go now to Isaiah 42. I'm just read one verse here, I think 16. And I will bring the blind by a way that he knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. See, only a heavenly father, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, can do this. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. See? He's in charge. Can't do anything about it. Let's go back to Isaiah 45 again. Let's read a few verses here, starting at 2. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. But reading this makes me think of like you're in prison, but it's our minds that is in prison with the lies and philosophies of this man, his pseudo-science, his, his religion and all of his, his politics. It's just lie after lie. Nothing is true. He can't tell the truth. He's a liar. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places, that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, Yahweh, which call thee by thy name, am the power of Israel, for Jacob my servant's sake, and Israel mine elect. I have, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no power beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. You see, that's our power. That's who he is. We belong to him. No one can get us from his grasp. No one can take our place. We have these liars currently in our land taking our identity. They don't fit any of the prophecies. Scripture said, and a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. That's them. 
We're in Acts, Philippians 2, starting at 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is Yahweh which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Verse 14. Do all things without murmurings, murmurings and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, as Yahweh is his name, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation who's in rulership and has been since the 13th, 14th century. It's the Edomite, the so-called white man. He's ruling in absolute wickedness. He's that wicked root. Let's read it again. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of the power, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life. Truth, this word is Yahweh Shai. That's who we worship. We believe in that by faith. That I may rejoice in the day of Hamashiach, the anointed, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. We're going to keep the lesson relatively short. We may come back and do another lesson later on. But this wicked root thinks he can extend his time, but we've identified him. We know who you are, it's the so-called white man, the so-called, since 1681, he's a, a liar. He's ruling in wickedness. The whole of the master's creation would be destroyed if this man is not removed. So we're looking forward to what is gonna happen next. Let him come forward quickly and make this thing mandatory and start pushing it. Let's get it moving, get the war started, and then we'll look on high for Yahweh to send his son and the angelic army to destroy and remove this man from power and set up his kingdom. So let's uh, call it a day on that lesson. You've been listening to A Wicked Root. Shalom until the next one.